course I bought it. What did you think I was going to do? The owner's doing something here with the tires. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing, but the fact he uh, has the original jack in use slightly scares me. But I figured since he went back to work, I could take you on a little walk around the bus and sort of show you in a little more detail the condition of it. It's pretty good, uh, especially what I paid for what I paid for it, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, you can see it does have a little bit of rust, mostly right here. This is the only really bad area. Um, you can see it's got some rust here, but it sort of stops right here. The rest of this is solid. It's got a little bit of rust here on the bottom um, rocker panel on what I believe this is called the long wall. I've been uh, reading on the, the Samba, trying to figure out all the bus terminology so I don't sound like a complete dolt. Um, it's got some rust here in the dog leg, I believe this is called. Um, I would just call it the front um, rocker panel, but the dog leg, I guess, sounds better. It does not have any rust in this part here, which I've heard is very a very common place for it to rust out. Uh, the frame is solid. The undercarriage is very solid. There is a little rust right here, but that's just surface rust. It does not go all the way through. You can see the inside of the door is okay. Uh, the mirror is broken. There isn't a terrible amount of rust in this piece. Uh, there is a little bit of bubbling. I'm assuming there might be some rust under this failing window seal. Who can? Who knows? Um, on the front, it's pretty good. It's missing the spare tire. He, the owner said he was going to try to find that for me, which is nice. Uh, you know, the marker lights have some cracks in them. It's missing the antenna. I think yeah, that'd be the antenna. Most of it's just surface rust. You can see there's surface rust here on the bottom side of the door um, and on around the this side mirror, which is still in, in good condition. Hello. I'm wearing a hat today. Um, this door is a little bit worse than the other one. You can see it does have a little bit of rust in it. But, I mean, honestly, it's not bad. Um, there's less rust in this dog leg on this side. But there's still enough rust that I'm probably going to have to replace the dog leg. I'm not sure. Um, again, no rust in this area on the side. Just, you know, some, some surface kind of crustiness. Um, the interior is in pretty decent condition. It's just dirty. He's still removing some of his stuff from it. Um, it's just dirty for the most part. As you saw in the first video, we're going to have to do a new canvas roof. Some kind of button. Um, the interior in the front is very good actually. The seats are not destroyed, which is uncommon. Most of these are just completely ruined. You can see the Westphalia pattern is still there. This piece of ribbing has kind of come off, but I'm probably just going to glue that back on. Um, find the key here. The bus does have a charge. He recharged the battery. I'll go ahead and turn the key. You can see the light turns on over there. and There is a charge in the battery. But I'm not going to crank the engine until I have put oil in the cylinders. Because the engine in this bus hasn't been started in over three years. So, while I could probably get away with just trying to start it, I'm going to actually put some oil in it. The worst section is back here, by far. It was rear-ended, as you can see. And uh, this bar is, is bent in. The original bumper was a total write-off. He did get another one. It's in the, in the inside of there, um, in the inside of the bus. This gate is pretty sad. Uh, might be repairable, but I doubt it. I'm just going to probably try to find another one. The rear tail lights are all right. This one has a chip in it. Overall, though, I think it's pretty good. It is one owner, as I mentioned in the first video. He uh, 
Actually, his mother drove it off the lot in 1975, I think. I was, I think I said it was a 73 in the first video, but it's actually 75. Now, the best part about this entire thing is the cost. I only paid $1,500 for the entire bus. So, I feel like if it works at all, it's worth it for $1,500. Hell, it's probably worth it for $1,500 just for the pretty good condition Westphalia interior. Oh, be careful I don't knock his Volvo 240 off the jack stand. Interesting car, this, actually. This is a Volvo 240 Turbo with a manual transmission. Arguably rarer than the bay window. But, anyway, I'm going to uh, put this hatch down. I had it propped up on a hunk of wood here. And we can take a look at the motor, uh, which is under this cover back here. And, uh, I mean, it's down here, too. This is um, a bit weird for me. Uh, this is a, a air-cooled VW that has a computer. This is a fuel-injected... I believe it's a Type 4 or Type 5. I don't know if they made a Type 5. I think it's a Type 4 engine. Um, Air-cooled. It's got a computer right there. Um, it's fuel-injected and it has electronic ignition. I know it looks like it has a distributor, but apparently it does some wizardry under there. Supposedly, so the owner says, it's been very reliable. So we're going to see if it's going to be reliable enough to start. I don't know if we're going to get it started today, but I'm definitely going to put some oil in the cylinders and at least crank it over a little bit. Um, this is in good condition back here. It's just dirty. You can see the difference in the color. Um, most of the problems with this bus are cosmetic. You can see like this stuff is, this trim is failing a little bit. Uh, these panels could use some refinishing, etc., etc. Just a lot of small stuff to keep me busy. That's what I wanted. I didn't want a bus that needed, you know, complete mechanical overhaul or uh, complete, you know, just tons of rust or anything on it. I just wanted one that was just, you know, just enough to keep me busy. Nothing ridiculous. Um, yeah, and the floor as well, up front where I've heard they rust out, is pretty good. Oh, it's actually perfect. Uh, so is this, just a little bit of kind of this cardstock material falling to bits. I believe he's got the owner's manual in here. Yep. Let me get this out here. Volkswagen Camp Mobile. It's a 1977, not 1975. It goes on vacation with you. You can see. pretty cool. So, I say we open up the rear hatch and we try to get some Marvel Mystery Oil into the cylinders and uh, cranky cranky and see if it see if it wants to spin. So here is the Type 4, I think, engine. Let me turn the uh, low light mode on. Amazingly, we do not have any serious rodent damage, which I've heard is a terrible issue with Volkswagens. Um, there are some bits of nut material and other things down there, but I looked in the cooling system and there's no mouse nests, which is nice. Uh, the spark plugs are here. Come on, there we go. There's the plug wire and down there is the spark plug. Uh, here's the mass airflow sensor. I bet you never thought you'd see one of these on an air-cooled engine. Um, as well as an unbelievable amount of vacuum lines. This is a charcoal canister for filtering, like, gas tank vapors or something bizarre. I don't remember what that is. Um, I do not remember what this is used for. Um, so I say we go get some oil, and we crack the spark plugs out, and we put some oil in. All right, stay tuned. So this is what you're going to need if you're going to take the spark plugs out of a Volkswagen engine. You're going to need a socket. This is a, um, what size is this? I don't even think this says. It's just a standard spark plug socket with the rubber inside. 
you're going to need a universal joint like this so that you can actually get the ratchet in where you want it. And you're going to need an extension. You do not have to have these fancy turned snap-on extensions like I have. Um, I did not buy this, by the way. I could never afford to buy a, a snap-on extension would be the point of that. This was from a yard sale. And you also don't need one of these fancy gear wrench expanding ratchets. It's just what I have. So we're going to pull the spark plugs out. Um, and we're going to stick some Marvel Mystery Oil down the cylinders. These ones are going to be a pain to get to because I can like I can hardly even see them down there. I know they're there, but they're I might have to get the one closest to this side. Whoa, buddy, focus. From down in here somewhere. Yeesh. Yeah, there it is. So we're gonna see how we go with that, and uh, I'll report back. Okay, so all four cylinders have been oiled. All the spark plugs are removed. I also put some fresh fuel with some uh, gas additive. Just a little bit of that um, stabilizer stuff that's supposed to restore old fuel, just a little bit, into the gas tank. So when I turn the key to try to crank the motor over, it, uh, it does not try to suck old gas into the fuel system. And so I will go ahead and I will uh, turn the key and we'll see what happens. Well, the engine cranks over and it sounds pretty good. Sounds like it's making compression on all four cylinders. However, the battery, as you heard, basically just went dead. Um, that's what I expected, frankly. I didn't even expect it to crank it this much. So, unfortunately, this Volvo has no back tires on it um, because the owner needs new back tires and so took them to the tire store, I believe. And uh, I cannot pull my Outback, which is over there, any further up. Um, so either I take the battery completely out of my car, which I don't really want to do, and bring it up here, or I wait until another day. See what I said? Manual transmission, Volvo 240 Turbo. Anyway, we'll see. Okay, today is a new day. We're back. There's my friend Hunter. And uh, the Volvo 240, as you can see by where I'm standing, is gone. So I brought some gas. I also filled the tank with gas yesterday. And we're actually going to see now with the charged battery if this thing will start. I really hope it does because I don't have a car trailer to take this home. So, all right, let's see. Put some gas in it. And uh, let's try two. Okay, so basically what I figured out is when you turn the key on, the relay for the fuel pump clicks, but there is no fuel pressure, and I can only assume the fuel pump has gone bad. So I'm going to order a new one of those off the internet, and uh, we'll put it in, I guess, in the next episode. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. Well, it's the next day, and it's a rainy one today. I've gotten a bit of a break in the clouds to come over and work on the, the 77. So what I'm going to do today is I previously assumed that the fuel pump, like on a modern vehicle, is behind the engine in there inside the fuel tank, but it's actually right underneath the bus. And I lay down this nice piece of paper to sit down on. Let me get underneath here, and uh, I'll show you where it is. It's actually right here. So the fuel pump is actually right here. It's this little canister thing just held on by one bolt and a couple of hose clamps. Here's the fuel filter, and this fuel line right here is actually what goes directly into the gas tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect this fuel pump, and uh, we're going to see if we can run it manually outside of the vehicle. Um, if the fuel pump does not work, which is what I'm assuming, um, we'll know that the fuel pump is bad and I have to order another one. If the fuel pump runs outside the car, but does not run when it's sitting here connected to the electrical system, I know the problem is electrical, not mechanical, and I can start troubleshooting the wiring. Alright, let's get to it. 
One thing of note, uh, while I'm just lying underneath the bus here, is just how clean it is um, under here. I believe I talked about this when I was first videoing the bus before I bought it, but I mean, this is amazing. I can't believe how clean the underside of this bus is for a, a northern bus especially and especially a bus from the 70s you can see there is a little bit of peeling undercoat right here exposing original paint on the floor i'm gonna have to get that undercoated again um but overall i don't know what this is some kind of broken um piece of the heater system i believe uh, but the main heater pipe is seems to be in good condition as do all the uh brake lines and whatever these are i guess brake lines throttle cables ascent etc etc here is another line I'm not sure what that is for um, vacuum line or something the e-brake tube which I believe is this piece is a little bit damaged up there but it's not terrible um, the underside for the most part looks very good all the steering box and everything seems to be in pretty good working order from what I can see I'm wondering if this pipe here Come on. This pipe here actually attached where that hose clamp is down there. I can't quite see what's connected to that from where I'm sitting. But overall, you can see everything's in really good shape. This is a brake line, I think, here on the frame. But let me get that fuel pump off and we'll we'll see what the condition of it's like. Okay, after much trials and many tribulations, we finally removed the fuel pump. It's convenient that it just connects with some spade terminals here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this and confirm it doesn't work because these are actually rather expensive to get a genuine one. I mean, you can get an aftermarket one for $40 or whatever, but you can get the new actual Bosch, Bosch, Bosch ones are considerably more expensive. They're like 100 bucks. So I'm going to just quickly test this and uh, I'll be back. And just as I suspected, it's dead as a doornail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home and I'm going to order a new fuel pump. And uh, I probably just get an aftermarket one just for the sake of getting the thing up and running and then perhaps I'll get an official one later on. Um, and then in part two, I guess we'll install this and see if the thing will actually run for an extended period of time and maybe I can actually drive it out of here. Because as it sits right now, with no fuel pump in it, it's not going anywhere. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.